I got a letter. The name on the envelope said, Mary. My wife's name. It's ridiculous. Couldn't possibly be true. That's what I keep telling myself. A dead person can't write a letter. Mary died of that damn disease three years ago. So then, why am I looking for her? Our special place. What could she mean? This whole town was our special place. Does she mean the park on the lake? We spent the whole day there. Just the two of us, staring at the water. Could Mary really be there? Is she really alive? Waiting for me? Silent Hill 2 is the most hauntingly beautiful game I have ever played, and in my own humble opinion, tells not only the greatest character-driven narrative in gaming, but one of the greatest stories in all of fiction. The ending of the making of Silent Hill 2 displays a quote by philosopher Francis Bacon. Have a read of it now. I believe this perfectly encapsulate what makes Silent Hill 2 such a remarkable experience and I couldn't think of any other way to describe it better. Every single aspect of Silent Hill 2 shares features of both unusualness and familiarity, to evoke a feeling of unorthodox satisfaction and beauty in the player. Silent Hill 2 is both a fantastic gameplay experience and a downright chillingly wonderful experience of narrative building. Now what do I mean by all this? Well, just take a look at the monsters. They're all fantastically disturbing and unnatural, but they all have distinct human features. And this is why Silent Hill 2 is so ridiculously disturbing and haunting. It's often said that the line between familiarity and the unusual is the most terrifying. And it is, it really is. Knowing that something is not of this world, but still being able to relate it to your own, is frankly horrifying. It makes you ponder, are we in these monstrosities, one and the same? And I think that's the main reason why the game has stayed with me since childhood. I still have my old copy on the PS2 way back from 2001. I played this game when I was four or five years old. It's stuck with me ever since. And that's what I mean when I say that Silent Hill 2 is haunting. There are scary experiences to be had in other mediums when compared to Silent Hill 2, well, even in gaming itself. Hell, even in its own franchise there are scarier games than Silent Hill 2. Take Silent Hill 3 for example, I think that's the scariest in the entire series. What those don't have is the ability to resonate deeply with its audience. To haunt is to be persistently and disturbingly in the presence of something, and Silent Hill 2 haunts my mind with its unique and macabre tone. And it's been like that with me for over 10 years now. There are horror games that are more akin to Silent Hill 2. The entire Silent Hill series after 4 has tried to replicate the feeling of Silent Hill 2, but none have succeeded. Why is this? I mean, it's Silent Hill. This is one of the greatest survival horror franchises of all time, and it's shaped the industry as we know it, so why can't it be replicated? Well, I think one of the developers describes it best. Psychological horror has to uh, shake human's heart, uh, you know, deeply. You know, shaking people's heart deeply means uh, uh, means, uh, you know, uncover people's core emotion and their core motivation for life. Everybody is uh, thinking and uh, concerning about, uh, you know, sex and death 
every day. And、uh, if we want to、uh, scare or shake or touch the users or spectators,、uh, then we have to、uh, think about you know, sex and death deeply. To、uh, make like a dead death scene, you know, somebody died, or monsters died, or you know,、uh, if we made that kind of scene,、uh, we try to、uh, we try to mix erotic、uh, essence. This is kind of a visual and、uh, you know, core concept. And it's true. Silent Hill 2 shakes you deeply on an emotional level. This story couldn't have been told in any other genre apart from horror. The theme of acceptance is prevalent in Silent Hill 2, and to shake someone to their core is to invoke the oldest and greatest of man's emotions: fear. Fear is long-lasting. Terrifying moments of your life are some of the most memorable. It will never leave you. It will haunt you to the grave. And the themes and lessons taught in Silent Hill 2 to its protagonist James Sunderland, and even the player in some regard, will stick with them for possibly their entire life. It won't leave them because of the fear that they experienced. I think Yatsi puts it quite well. See, Silent Hill 2 is very good at telling a story without words. Everything is drenched in symbolism. The basic monsters are all suspiciously effeminate, with the exception of Pyramid Head in his first appearance before he totally sold out. An uber masculine powerhouse repeatedly seen plunging his massive throbbing knife into the other monsters' moist, quivering bodies, which obviously symbolises neoconservative imperialism. You start to think that James' his nightmare might be entirely of his own creation, as if the town is just handing him a set of jumpies and watching as he sticks them on his balls. It's a fascinating voyage of pain and despair that leaves you emotionally drained and satisfied, like fucking a bird. Dolphin. Silent Hill 3 had some great moments, but made the mistake of continuing the story of the Silent Hill 1 Doofus Brigade. Silent Hill 4 was more interesting, but the gameplay design misstepped so hard that both its femurs burst out of its legs and rocketed off into the sky. And Origins and Homecoming were the crushingly bland butter sandwiches to Silent Hill 2's glorious meatball footlong. The upcoming Silent Hill Shattered Memories claims that it will have a psychological test at the start and adjust its content accordingly in order to really get into the player's head. Interesting, but it's worth remembering that Silent Hill 2 managed that without needing such a gimmick, with just a doofus, a stick with a nail. And a big lad with trigonometry for a face. And as we approach our conclusion, it's time for me to answer the question: What does Silent Hill 2 mean to me? Well, without my experience of this game, I highly doubt this video or even this channel would exist. You see, Colonel Cubbage was not originally a channel for a bridge series or thought pieces. It was for let's plays and game reviews. What has that got to do with Silent Hill 2, though? You ask. Playing that game and experiencing that story changed my whole outlook on gaming. I thought games were nothing more than entertainment up until that point, something to pass the time and to merely alleviate boredom. After playing Silent Hill 2, I developed an understanding for gaming as an art form. I finally realised the great potential that games have to tell such beautiful and emotional tales. The interactive art form allows the one experiencing those wonderfully disturbing tales to become even more engrossed and emotionally involved than they would when reading a book or watching a movie. I didn't realise any of this until I cried at the end of Silent Hill 2, one of the first games to ever make me feel that way. For lack of better words, it was simply a life-changing moment. I became passionate for the evolution and potential for storytelling in video games. I became enthralled by the possibilities of more experiences that blend both gameplay and story, and all of this was taught to me by Silent Hill 2. Clumsy combat was used to disempower the player and to put that feeling of discomfort into even greater effect, giving you a sense of never really being able to overcome the horrors you may face. But with determination, you can. This game also holds a great life lesson. Personally, I interpret it as if you have the determination to accept, then you have the will to move on. I've covered this idea in my Ava videos, I believe, but Silent Hill 2 taught me a lot as a kid, and I won't ever forget my time with it. It's the reason it's my second favorite game of all time. Team Silent are artists, and their game is a work of art, and that's why. Every Halloween, 
there can be only one game that I play for it. The haunting, disturbing and beautiful Silent Hill 2. <laughs> for you, James. See? I'm real.